Hello everyone. I just wanted to let you all know that I had a couple of dreams this past week and I've had a few confirmations as well. In my first dream, I walked outside from my apartment, only it wasn't my apartment, but it felt like it was. And so I'm walking outside of it and it's a work day. There are people at a crosswalk like they would be in a big city like New York. And you could tell that they were all professionally dressed and walking to work. I live in a smallish sort of town with only 25,000 people in it, and no one walks to work unless they don't have a ride. But the point here is that people are outside and they're going about their daily activities. And I'm standing there with probably about 20 people at this crosswalk, and I see in the sky a huge planetary object. Then I see a sequence of images real quick. First I see the big planetary object all by itself. Then I see two planetary objects side by side. Then I see one big planetary object, and to the left of it, there's a smaller planetary object that looks to be the size of our moon. No one else seems to see this. Everyone is looking straight ahead, and no one but me is looking in the sky. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that object in the sky is huge. Why isn't anyone else seeing this? Then everyone began walking across the street, and I thought, that thing is getting really close now, and I have to tell people. I have to warn them before it's too late. Then I began going down into a subway system, and the dream ended. My thought about that dream is that it may be twofold. It may have two meanings. The first meaning of the dream is prophetic. There will be things that we begin to see in the sky, and they will be getting closer to the point that no one will be able to ignore them. And the second meaning of this dream is that I can see things that others can't, and it's my responsibility to warn everyone. Then the next day, before I woke up, I had two more dreams. One of them was actually a message for someone I know, but I was just thinking that I could share it with all of you, and it may help someone else. In the dream, I was in a convertible car with this person that I know, and he was driving. He was straddling the line of the road. There were cars coming at us, and he was getting upset, not, under not understanding why there was oncoming traffic coming at us. Then one of the cars in the left lane sideswiped the convertible, scratching the paint on the driver's side and denting the front end. The person I was with pulled over into a drive of some kind, and he began assessing the damage. As he was looking at the car, I reminded him that we needed to go to a conference and listen to someone speak. Then my friend says to me, I'll be wearing earplugs. Before I tell you the meaning of this dream, I want to say that this person is a professing man of God. He believes that he is saved, but like many people, he, he gets lost in the things of the world at times and doesn't give enough of his attention to God. So the Holy Spirit was giving me a warning in this dream to give to my friend that he is trying to straddle both lines in the road, meaning that he has a part of himself in God and a part of himself in the world. And not only that, but he stopped listening, which is why he wanted to put in the earplugs in the dream. This person has been warned before about choosing one path, and now he is being warned again. Only this time he's not listening, which is also why the Holy Spirit had to tell me to tell him. If any of you out there are like this, let this be a lesson to you. We must choose to give up the things of the world, such as television and movies mainstream and alternative music that has nothing to do with the praise and worship of God, and whatever else you may be giving more of your attention to instead of giving your attention solely to the things of God. God desires that we give more of ourselves to Him than to the things of the world. He desires that we may come out of the world and give ourselves only to Him. I'll be honest that unless I've got a message to get out, or unless I'm having to work or run errands or do my household duties, I don't spend the time that I used to in the Word of God, and I don't praise Him and worship Him as much as I used to either. He's always on my mind, and I'm always in conversation with the Holy Spirit, but I spend a lot of my time listening to the television while I'm usually doing something with the computer. But God desires more than this. If you've ever wondered why you don't hear from the Holy Spirit as much as other people do, it's because you're not spending the time with the Lord. You get as much as you give, like any relationship. If you desire to hear from the Lord, 
you've got to put in the time with him. He wants to hear from you. He wants you to meditate on the things of his word. He wants you to praise and worship him, and he wants you to be used for his will to help others. You must commit 100% of yourself to him, especially now, the closer he gets to coming for those that he's chosen. In my third dream, I walked into what I now believe was a cafe. I was wearing a spring dress, and it looked fancy enough to wear to a wedding or a special event. I was also carrying a bouquet of flowers. I suppose the dress may have been one that would be chosen for a bridesmaid. And when I walked in, I went straight to the sales counter, and I was given a gift. The gift was wrapped in white wrapping paper and a silver bow. Just as I began to unwrap the gift, I took a step outside and looked around. Apparently I knew that I was being picked up and I wanted to see if my ride had come. When I took the step outside to see, I saw a nice expensive black car outside the door. Apparently something inside of me knew that this was the car that I was looking for. So I grabbed the gift and I went out the door. When I approached the car, I opened the back passenger side door and I saw a man sitting in the back seat. He had on a suit and I could see that he had silver shoulder length hair. I didn't see his face, but I instinctively knew that it was Jesus. I got in the car and I apologized that I hadn't come out sooner. I was only in the cafe for what seemed to be a minute, but I was apologizing for running late. I told him that I had lost track of time and then I thanked him for the gift, which I believe was a watch, and then we drove away. So in this dream, I'm waiting to be picked up to go to a wedding, which I am obviously part of, due to the fact that I'm dressed up, and I have both a bouquet of flowers and I have a gift. The gift is a watch that was given to me so that I would know what time it is. Then there's a nice expensive car that comes to pick me up. Jesus is dressed in a suit in the back seat, and there's a driver in the front seat whom I presume is the Father, as he's always the driver in my dreams. The Holy Spirit is letting me know that it's time to go off to the wedding banquet. Somehow, I'm off to a late start, or I've lost track of time, and the Lord is waiting for me. Perhaps I represent the bride. My dress is not, convention is not a conventional wedding dress. It's ankle length, and it seems to have ruffles at the bottom of the dress. I believe the dress is made of a thin fabric, like taffeta or charmeuse or some other type of spring fabric, which would be worn in warmer temperatures. But then this wedding is not a conventional wedding either. So perhaps there is a greater message here that the bride has lost track of time, and Jesus is waiting for us so that he may take us to the wedding banquet. Sometimes I forget that messages aren't just for me or about me, but for the bride as a whole. The gift that I was given, which I strongly feel was a watch, which is just to let us know to keep watch so that we don't forget. I did not actually see the watch or the time on the watch, so I don't know what time was actually on the watch. But clearly given the rest of the message in the dream, it is time to go home. That morning, after I woke up, my husband came home. He works third shift and generally comes home around 6 o'clock. He normally feeds our cats in the morning when he comes home because I'm usually either asleep or I'm getting around for work. On this particular morning, I was up getting around for work and he was attempting to gather the cats so that he could feed them and he called out for our cat Darius, who died last May. I believe that this slip of the tongue was a confirmation from the Lord that I'm getting ready to see Darius again. Then later, after I got to work, I was ringing someone up at the cash register, and the person's total came up to $8.88. As many of you know, the number 8 is the number for eternity, and it is also the number for a new beginning, as in the 8th day being the beginning of a new week or a new period. So I feel that that was another confirmation from the Lord that we're getting ready to enter into a new period or the 8th day of eternity. Also, I forgot to say that when I woke up that morning, I had the song, Wake Up Little Susie, playing in my head. I don't listen to oldies. In fact, I kind of hate the music of the 50s and 60s. 
So there's no reason that that song should be in my head unless someone put it there. I believe it to be another confirmation from the Lord that it is time to wake up from our slumber because the trumpet call of God is ready to sound. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, refer back to Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins. So those are my dreams and confirmations for the week. I hope that they've encouraged you and brought you the hope for the soon arrival of our Lord Jesus. We're going home very soon, people. Any day now. May God bless every one of you. I love you all. Shalom. Gotta go.